can be almost impossible to predict this season, but there's one thing you can guarantee, goals. What a fantastic start for Liverpool and for Takumi Minamino. McTominay, clean as you like. Quick feet, wonderful goal from Sadio Mane. McTominay again, two. Henderson, absolutely brilliant goal from Liverpool. Here's Daniel James, and that is five for Manchester United. Southern. Gone for a cover! Oh! That may well be the pick of the bunch! A sensational seven! And Manchester United have hit one of their fiercest rivals for six. Goals galore! Are you not entertained? Boxing Day games are one of English football's great traditions and there are six fixtures including second against third as Leicester hosts Manchester United and then the champions are involved in one of four matches on Sunday. May 2016, Leicester City completed one of world football's greatest stories. Premier League champions, the surprise winners no one had seen coming. The Foxes felt the joy of glory and they've made it clear they're eager to experience it again. Jamie Vardy smashes Leicester into the lead and right up to second place. After the 2-0 victory over Tottenham last weekend, Leicester are the closest contenders to league leaders Liverpool. They sit four points adrift after 14 games. But they were in the same position last season, only to slip away and eventually finish fifth. For us, it's a matter of just building game by game, take it, uh, take it slow, take it steady, and um, yeah, we're not going to... We're not going to get carried away or get, get uh, sucked into thinking that, that we can do this, that and the other. It's a, it's a very unpredictable league this year, uh, but every chance of, of, of any team having success. Unpredictable sums up their home form. Brendan Rodgers' side may have won three at the King Power Stadium, but they've been beaten four times. By Everton most recently, but also by Fulham, Aston Villa and West Ham. In these four defeats, they've scored just once and conceded eight goals. Considering they've taken 18 from a possible 21 points on the road, it's a peculiar brand of homesickness. You look at the, the losses that we've had and they've, they've been very frustrating. And uh, for us, the next game is, is massive. And, um, and yeah, we're, we're, we're fully focused and uh, we, we want to put, put in good performances at home as well as uh, on the road. That target will be tested. Manchester United head to Leicester with the league's only unblemished record on the road. In fact, they're only the fourth side in English top flight history to win 10 consecutive games on their travels. And with this run of form, United have become the first club to accumulate a thousand away points in the Premier League. Fans or no fans, away from home, there is just no stopping Manchester United. I think we've started to realise now how important each game is playing for this club. We can't be going into games and playing 80%. We need to go and play 100% because every game in the Premier League is tough now. And I think last season it was a bit inconsistent in our performances just because generally we, we didn't do the basics well enough in games. So I feel like that's turned and our form at the moment is really impressive. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's men have won six of their last seven in the division. And in midweek they made it through to the League Cup semi-finals with a 2-0 win at Everton. That followed the emphatic 6-2 league victory over Leeds at Old Trafford, which took United into third place, just a point behind their hosts with a game in hand. For us, it's about improving as a team, taking game one game at a time. We have to. It's, it's, that's the name of the game. That, that's the only way that you're going to challenge for, uh, for anything at the end of a season anyway. It's not something we talk about. The only thing we talk about and focus on is uh, improving day by day. They've got you know, a fantastic squad of players and got really talented players, but, um, but no, it should make for a really, really good game. And uh, every, every game you have is an opportunity for you to, to get the result and uh, something that we've done pretty well so far this season. Two former champions with ambitions aligned. On the last day of last season, United ended Leicester's top four dreams. The Foxes haven't forgotten. Seldom has the need to rediscover home comforts been so compelling. Mikel Arteta and Frank Lampard. Perennial winners as players, but the two clubs that they love are on very different paths. 
I just have to make a statement that Arsenal is still the biggest club in London. But at this very moment, in the pecking order, it has to go Chelsea, Tottenham, even West Ham, then Arsenal, then Fulham. Have I missed any? Oh, Crystal Palace, they're below us. Oh, they're above us in the table, so are they below us? It's just been a bit of a mess, really, supporting Arsenal, because going into the beginning of the season, there was just a, a boost of confidence amongst the fans, and you think that Arsenal are going to do something amazing, but it's been the complete opposite. Sigurdsson and flicked in. And that's the kind of break Arsenal and Mikel Arteta did not want. I joked about it, I think, about five weeks ago. I saw the upcoming fixtures and I, I genuinely didn't believe that we would get any results from them. Other teams around us start winning. We could start looking at relegation or like 15th, 16th. And, and that's where we are now. And it was a joke and I wish I never said it. I felt like I've spoken it into existence, but it's not me on the pitch and it's not me managing the team. It's not the unthinkable. Even just to sit in the relegation zone for a couple of weeks, that goes down in, in history and it needs to change. That's not the type of history we're trying to make. Aubameyang. The fan base were crying out for him to sign a new contract and it felt like a new signing. Great striker, but he's just not scoring. So that's definitely the most disappointing thing. Obviously, an in-form Aubameyang, I would definitely want to start, but he's not in form. So I don't feel like it's a huge loss if he doesn't start this game. I would think if it was any other club and any other manager, they would have lost their job by now. I'm surprised that he's kept his job, but I feel like he needs that time to, to implement his style, his players, and what he wants to do with the club. Because if any other manager was to walk in right now, I think it will be the same issues because it's the same players. He needs to concentrate on getting some pride back into the team and for the fans to start believing again. Hopefully Martinelli can uh, strike again. Martinelli can save us. Then he'll be reigned and the fans love him as it is, for that, especially for that one performance. If he has a performance like that again, then there's some hope. But I still don't expect to win. But if they do, it'll be a big boost for the players, 100%. I don't know what to expect against Chelsea. We are losing four matches. That is my responsibility to, to put that right. And regardless what they do, I think uh, it's been us. You know, many times the opponent has been us, uh, the one that uh, has let ourselves down. And, uh, and it's down to us to change it. So it's, I, I don't think I have ever used uh, an excuse. In towards Pulisic, comes out to Abraham. And Chelsea are over the hills and far away from West Ham United now. I predicted Chelsea to win the league only because of the, the signings that they made. Some of these players have just not hit the ground running yet. Timo Werner, I mean, he's missing really clear-cut chances and that would frustrate me as a fan. Pulisic is one of the players I rate highly. When he's on top form, I feel like he's unstoppable. He definitely plays for the Chelsea badge. He plays with a lot of fight. There's a lot of threats there, a lot more than Arsenal have at the moment. Right, Lampard's done okay. I mean, he's doing better than I expected. I feel like Arteta should have done what he did and got experience at a championship club first. But the, the difference is Frank Lampard had better players when he joined, has the budget to buy big players as well. Chelsea were in the Champions League before he joined. They're still in the Champions League, so he has that pulling power to attract big players as well. But he's done well, regardless. The minimum target for Chelsea is top four, and I think they will achieve that. He definitely wants to win the league, and which manager doesn't? I'm not sure if they will do that, but definitely top four. Sometimes the, the idea of playing the derby is the, the spur that the team needs to, to try and get a result. So again, we have, we have to expect the best Arsenal, which is a really good footballing team with really good players, well coached, rotations in their team, lots of threats in attacking areas. That's what, that's what I expect, so we have to prepare for that. I'm just not confident. And maybe if I do this little reverse psychology thing and think that Arsenal will lose, they might just prove me wrong and win. It'll be massive for the fans and massive for the players. And it will save Arteta's job, I think. <laughs>
Newcastle have revealed that key men Alassa Maxima and Jamal Lascelles are still suffering from the long-term effects of coronavirus. Steve Bruce's side have been coping with adversity. They're only four places behind City in the Premier League table, having taken seven points from the last 12 available. It's not clear to see why Wolves are so inconsistent. A team that can be highly impressive one week. It's Neto! Surely wins it for Wolverhampton Wanderers! And then mediocre the next. Chris Wood doubles Burnley's knee. And Wolves are in deep trouble now. That defeat at Burnley was the old gold's third in four games. They're 11th in the table with Tottenham in town next. We want to bounce back from, from this game against Burnley. And uh, I think it's the, the best thing is to, to play a, a big team of this league. So we're going to prepare this, this game uh, this week to be ready uh, against Tottenham. There was a notable change in Spurs' season this week. Jose Mourinho's team were top of the table when they took on Crystal Palace. Three league games later, they're sixth. Beaten by Liverpool and then Leicester has left Mourinho wanting more. But he got just that 12 months ago at Molyneux when Jan Vertonghen won it for Tottenham in stoppage time. They're not getting carried away at Craven Cottage, but Fulham are finding some consistency. Three successive draws and just one defeat in their last five league games. The players hope to continue their form in Scott Parker's absence. He's isolating because of COVID-19. We are set up well and we are improving offensively and defensively. I hope in the matches that are coming up, we can continue in this vein and get the results that will allow us to climb the table. We look solid now and that should help us to get out of the relegation zone. A fall from third to seventh place followed Southampton's 1-0 home defeat to Manchester City. Ralph Hasenhutl will be disappointed too to lose Danny Ings, who suffered a hamstring injury. But during his last absence, Shea Adams impressed. And Theo Walcott's already scored two league goals on the road. Saints are only two points off Everton and Manchester United in fourth and third respectively. United still have that game in hand. Leicester trail leaders Liverpool by four points. Burnley eased their plight with victory over Wolves. Fulham remain in the bottom three, while Sheffield United have just two points to their name. Contrasting fortunes at Bramall Lane. The Blades are on course for the worst ever season in the Premier League, while Everton are looking good. Boing boing baggies, when you've been up and down as much as West Brom have, keeping your chin up is essential. They have a record of five Premier League promotions, four relegations and one great escape. My five years was was a little bit crazy, you know. I soon got to know the history of the club and uh, the yo-yo situation and the boing boing and stuff like that. We're not a massive club where we can spend massive amounts of money on players. You know, we have to be clever in the, in the transfer market and try and find little bargains. Going back to maybe the 2004-05 season, the Great Escape, I think one of the biggest reasons why we stayed in the division was because we had a great team spirit, hard work, uh, attitude, application. I think as a player, you just try and do your job, try and create a team spirit and try and get that unity where you can try and stay in the league. But that unity will now need to be reinstalled by a new leader. Slavan Bilic was dismissed after just one win in their opening 13 games. His replacement, Sam Allardyce. He began his coaching career at the Hawthorns 30 years ago and has built a reputation on being football's firefighter. Allardyce takes great pride at having never been relegated from the Premier League. I used to hate playing against Sam's teams. They're well organised, everyone knows the job. They can be back to front, they can mix it up. He works a lot on set plays, defensively and offensively. Being out of the game for two years won't be a negative. I think, you know, um, in, in fact, I'll probably say it'd be a positive because he'll have loads of energy. He'll be, he'll be enthusiastic to get back on the training pitch. I don't think there are too many misapprehensions for Sam Allardyce about the magnitude.
magnitude of the task ahead. I don't think it was the best performance, you know, um, at all. Obviously, Liverpool getting sent off is not going to help. But it's early doors, they're in the bottom three, it's hard. I think Pereira is probably the key player to, to West Brom, obviously. You know, he's shown glimpses in the Premier League this year, um, but we need to get him firing back up. The signing of Gallagher on loan from, from Chelsea has been a very, you know, inspired sign. And he's sitting there every time I watch West Brom play, he seems to be the, the standout player. After a few weeks of being on the training ground um, with the West Brom players, we'll start seeing, you know, the Bolton shape and way of playing come out probably in the West Brom team. Goals have been difficult for us to come by, um, but clean sheets are, are more important to start with than, than goals. And if you can get more goals and more clean sheets at the same time, well, we'll start uh, shooting up that league a little bit better and a little bit quicker than maybe anybody expected. Next for Allardyce, the champions. Liverpool have reasserted their dominance at the top of the table in the past week. Their 7-0 victory at Crystal Palace was their biggest ever Premier League win away from home. But it's at Anfield where they are both frightening and formidable. 66 league games without defeat there, a true reflection of their quality. The last team to beat them in their backyard were Crystal Palace, managed by Allardyce. What I expect is a, a tough opponent. It was always tough uh, against some Allardyce teams. Um, well organised. Um, yeah, don't make a big fuss of possession or whatever. And in the situation West Brom is in any way, uh, they go for uh, there will be a proper fight. We know what an incredible team Liverpool are. You know, with Firmino and Mane and Salah, the, the, the strikers are, are, are in immense form, and uh, it'll be all about stopping them and trying to get a goal on the counter-attack or a set play. If they can have that bit of team spirit and unity we had in 2004-05 season, I think um, they'll have a chance. But they need to start winning games fairly quickly and getting some points on the board. A master in escapology against a magician who loves entertainment. Think you know what you're going to get at Anfield on Sunday? Perhaps think again. Big Sam's box of tricks is pretty deep too. Same badge, same fine old stadium, but what a transformation. Dean Smith's Aston Villa have twice as many points as after 12 games last season. It's their best tally at this stage of a campaign in nearly 20 years. They've been especially impressive away. Five wins on the road, the latest at the Hawthorns. They need to match that at Villa Park, where they're winless in four, but home improvements should be possible for the team with the top flight second best defence. I think it's, uh, it's a whole team spirit and confidence that's leading us to get clean sheet after clean sheet. Uh, so hopefully we keep the, we keep playing that way, we keep pressing, we keep defending when we have to, and hopefully we can let's see where we can we can finish. Defending was something Crystal Palace found virtually impossible against on fire Liverpool last week. The Eagles conceded seven goals at home for the first time. It's now just one win in six for Roy Hodgson's men. Christian Benteke is available after suspension and will be on guard against another ban. He was sent off in July on his last visit to his former club. When West Ham headed for Stamford Bridge during the week, there was just a single point between them and Chelsea. That gap might now be four, but the fact David Moyes' team are still able to tap on the door of the top six says plenty about their season. The head-scratcher for Moyes is where they could be if Mikel Antonio was fit again. Brighton's league position carries its own questions. The latest draw with Sheffield United was their sixth of the campaign, and that mixture of youth and experience has the potential to blend together nicely but it hasn't happened yet. We are where we are and, and we have to try to improve our situation. And, and that's where the work has been and that's what we're trying to focus on. We want to get more points. We want to climb the league table, um, just like all our opponents do as well. There are only three teams below Brighton now and unsurprisingly, they've drawn with all of them. It's great fun watching Leeds, but the cavalier approach comes at a cost. 
They won't abandon their attacking principles, says manager Marcelo Bielsa, even though his team have conceded more goals than anyone else in the division, an eye-watering 30. They scored five against Newcastle in their last home win, scintillating stuff, but then went to Old Trafford and shipped six. Courage is great, but commitment to a dangerous policy surely raises questions. We didn't want to change our way of playing and we we play our football, which is very, very risky. And uh, we knew that in Premier League it's going to be even more risky than in Championship because obviously the quality of the players is it's bigger and uh, it's, it's, it's tougher. Burnley tend to favour a more conservative approach and having got back into their defensive groove, they're gaining momentum. They've let in just two goals in a four-game unbeaten run, including victories over Arsenal and most recently Wolves, when Ashley Barnes and Chris Wood, an effective striking duo in past seasons, scored in the same match for the first time since November 2019. Sheffield United are already in full survival mode and time appears to be running out. Bottom of the table, but oh my, how they nearly picked up three precious Premier League points at Brighton. Well back, 1-1. Well, well. Sheffield United were so, so close to winning this game. It's a script that feels familiar. Wins have become draws. Draws have become defeats. And with it, a goal difference that reflects a difficult three and a half months. The Blades have collected just two points from 14 games this season. The poorest start by any team in English top flight history. Looking at the points, Sally, and, and, and the gap, you know, we've got to obviously claw, claw our way back into the fight, uh, first and foremost. Uh, but there's enough games to, to, to do that. I think what we, sh what we have shown here at this football club is uh, that, we, that there is a, is a big fight in us, always. Visiting Everton, though, are on the rise again. Taken by Sigurdsson and flicked in. Yeri Mina, Everton, three wins on the bounce. A resurgence, a place in the top four again, but a consistent performer throughout it all. I think Calvert-Lewin has obviously been the shining light there. Uh, the form he showed so early in the season is, has been very impressive and obviously earned him an England call and England goals. I think he's unfortunate with the Arsenal game. Obviously, it's, he's got a head and took a deflection, it's gone in, so he deserves some level of credit for that. Um, and if we're talking then, realistically, a two-game drought, um, it's pretty impressive still. But I think circumstances have, have played a part in him picking the back four, which have then coincided with them keeping more clean sheets. And you look at Godfrey, he's been exceptional at left-back. Marco Keane's performing at a high level, very consistent. I think he, he would admit he had a difficult start to his Everton career, but I think he's set himself as the number one defender now um, at Everton. I think it's him and another person. I think we've now got a really good squad. Um, I think you've seen that. We've got two or three key players injured. I mean, the last week we've had three brilliant results um, in three tough games. and We've been tactically very good. and. Uh, we've sorted ourselves out at the back. There's no easy wins in the Premier League. Um, I'm sure they'll be confident that they can win this game. And Sheffield United are at the stage now where they, they have to win. They, they start about performing well. I know everyone touched on last week. They, they played well and the last game, I'm sure they would swap a performance for a result. It will be a tough, tough match. It will be an important match. We want to keep the position in the Premier League. That is a good position. Uh, Sheffield did a fantastic game against Brighton. Also because they were with 10 men, they performed really well, uh, and so it will be an important game. The warm embrace of the Premier League's top four is like few other feelings for football fans at Christmas. It's been on Everton's wish list for years. Sheffield United, though, are on the precipice. But a year ago, they were fifth. They were the surprise European challengers. That drive and determination doesn't just disappear, but Chris Wilder will be hoping that fortune will finally favour the Blades. That's a late kickoff on Saturday. The action actually gets underway when second play third at the King Power Stadium. In the early evening, there's the big London derby. On Sunday, Marcelo Bielsa's Leeds take on improving Burnley before Sam Allardyce leads West Brom to Anfield. 
And another full programme follows swiftly on. Manchester City head to Goodison on Monday night. The following evening, there are five matches. Brighton host Arsenal, who lost at the Amex last season. The final fixture of 2020 is Newcastle versus Liverpool. A time of dark, chilly nights when football brings its own festive delights. For Liverpool, to lead is a gift. So often the team top at Christmas has later won the title. But the present is no promise, and the chasing pack have their sights set on the same prize. While those less favoured have one thing on their wish list, to turn past struggles into future survival. From Chris Wise, me, Izzy Clark, and the rest of the team, goodbye 